Step 1. Mute City, likely the most populated metropolis on Earth. Mute City was soon to host the first race for the annual F-Zero Grand Prix. Days remained until it would begin. Many taverns and secreted, secreted gambling parlors were opening up shop for the upcoming race, which would bring in many fans to watch and drink. Many have tried turning their vehicles into F-Zero machines. Most of them fail, and those that succeed normally trash their machine, or die attempting various sharp turns. Notable racers who have perfected the handling of F-Zero machines are such as Rick Wheeler, Captain Falcon, Black Shadow, and Samurai Goro. Captain Falcon earned himself the most fame of all lovers, however, due to his mysterious persona and career. He is the fan favorite. A young woman was walking down the lower part of Mute City, where only the poor and scum roamed. She was carrying a heavy package, which was nearly as large as her. The young woman had passed by a small alley where two men were smoking. She had noticed them without directly looking at them and picked up the pace. One of the men took the other cigarette out of their mouth until it tossed it on the ground. One of the men whispered something into the other's ears, and they both grinned. The young woman suddenly noticed that they had begun stalking her closely. She started toying around with her light gold hair trying to calm herself. She rounded a corner hoping it was just a coincidence that they were behind her, but it wasn't, as they rounded the corner as well. She turned around one more corner of a building when one of the men finally ran in front of her. Say, where are you off to in such a hurry? The man asked, smiling deviously. The other man had caught up with the two and walked to the side of the woman. She could smell the scent of alcohol in the man's words. Oh, I'm sorry. Really need to get somewhere before it gets too late, she said, trying to act polite. The two looked at each other, then began laughing at her, making her feel uncomfortable. You really should have a man accompanying you, little girl. Maybe if you gave us your address, we could escort you home. That won't be necessary, she said, smiling with her eyes closed. An awkward moment of silence occurred. They were definitely up to something. Both were just staring at her, waiting for her to either speak again or do something. But she was waiting for the two to leave. So, toots, how about taking your top off, the man said, taking a shot in the dirt. Her eyes widened instantly. No, thank you. Here, let's get that off of you. Get the box out of her hands. The man to the left threw the box she was holding, roughly landing on the sidewalk. You idiot, she yelled, landing a punch straight into his face. He was quickly knocked to his knees, scraping his legs greatly. Damn it, I'm sick of this. The two both pulled out pocket knives, and the one in front of her grabbed her arm. Get your hands off of me, you pigs, she screamed. She was trapped in the man's arms. He was much stronger than his counterpart who had been punched. The man got up. His eyes were leaking and pants now ripped down to the knees. He raised his knife above the collar of her shirt, tearing it down slowly. She closed her eyes, struggling to escape without getting killed. She found her situation hopeless, however. Her bra was now revealed, the perverts both smiling with their mouths opened, prepared to remove it. I'm surprised trash is still on the streets by Thursday nights, said a mysterious voice. The two men paused what they were doing and looked around, searching for the anonymous voice surrounding them. Usually by Thursday morning, the garbage truck picks up trash as yourselves. Where the hell are you? demanded the man holding the woman. No response came after his question, and they continued looking around, ultimately seeing nothing. The hell with it. Let's continue, the man said trying to score on the girl. Suddenly the man holding her found that a spa splash of blood had hit his shirt. What the? The man, that, the man that was tearing down her shirt had a bullet in his neck. He fell down dead momentarily after getting shot. The man holding her looked up, gasping at the sight of a figure with a rifle on the roof. The figure stood in front of the moon. The man was perfectly silhou silhouetted by the moon. What was visible was that he was wearing a large coat, a scarf, and a sharply trimmed fedora. Dude, you just killed him, the man holding the woman yelled. The figure leaped onto the ground, landing on his feet somehow perfectly. I get tired of your kind making humanity look like a group of wild animals. I've been dealing with your type for years. If you're a wild animal, then I'm the hunter. The man holding her began trembling at the intimidating man. The young woman then took the opportunity to slip out of his grasp, immediately leaping around the mysterious man for cover. 
The criminal dropped his dagger, surrendering out of fear. I strongly recommend moving your operations to another sector of the city. This one is under my control. The criminal shut his eyes and growled. Fine, but I better not find the cops at my door tomorrow, or I'll... The criminal was trying to find an intimidating threat to make at the man, but he realized that he had no threats to make that could possibly scare him off. So he ran away while he still could. The mysterious figure made no attempt to chase or shoot him. The woman covered up her nearly revealed chest. Thank you. I th did they hurt you at all, he asked. No, they didn't, but they held me very roughly. He grabbed the box off the ground and handed it back to her. This seems somewhat heavy for someone like you. Mind me asking what's inside? Uh, well, it's silly, she said laughing with her eyes shut. The man pressed something he was holding in his hand. Suddenly a noise could be heard coming their way. She wanted to see it was bef what it was before leaving. Suddenly a very fast vehicle stopped in front of them, but it had no passenger. The vehicle appeared to be made for only one passenger. This was no ordinary vehicle. Number 47 was seen on the side of the vehicle in the words, Red Dove. It's an F-Zero machine, she blurted out, astonished. Yep. The man seemed to have no interest in sticking around, and had began walking towards his F-Zero machine. Wait, sir, she said, bringing the box to him. The man stopped and looked around, uh, look... The man stopped and turned around, looking at the package she was bringing over. I think you need this more than I do, she said, handing the box over to the man. He carefully opened the box, looking inside. The box contained an F-Zero engine, which appeared to be custom-made. Consider it a gift for save- This is a Class C engine. It would only slow me down. She then felt crushed, having her gift denied, and began shaking after the box handed back to her. You're wrong. I don't need it. But perhaps you could indeed use it yourself. He got inside of his vehicle, looking back at her. He then pulled out a pistol and threw it to her. The girl barely caught it, also holding her large box. Carry this from now on. I think those two plan to doing other things other than killing you. The girl moved her eyes to the side, half shut. I will, sir. I ask what your name is. The man hesitated to answer, looking away from her. Lieutenant Sapuku. Oh, great. My name is... He had drove off almost immediately after saying his name, clearly wanting nothing else from her. Chia Flower, she muttered, watching him drive away quickly. The chapter summary of this is that the young woman's name is Chia Flower. She's a girl in her 20s who clearly attracted the wrong crowd while trying to roam the streets of the lower parts of Mute City. Chia lives in the lower city of Mute City, which is for the poor, while the upper city is where the wealthy would live. But, since she is basically a bum, she has to roam the streets full of criminals. While she was walking to her home that she had, she was intercepted by two sexual assaulters wanting her to take off her shirt, but she was saved by the man known as Lieutenant Sapuku. Sapuku kills one of the criminals and lets the other one get away. Chia then, after thanking Sapuku, realizes that he is one who possesses an F-Zero machine, not knowing if he's a racer or just someone who was fortunate enough to have one. In the end, Sapuku simply exchanges names and gives her a handgun for personal protection to prevent further problems similar to this. There really isn't much I can talk about when it comes to the first chapter. One thing that I can get across right away is that this chapter is one of the more sexual ones, but that doesn't happen very often. I did this merely to get across to the readers that Chia is going to easily be a person that can be kind of pushed around. I did not make the first chapter like this for any kind of sexual desires. There's not many other chapters where it gets like this, but there are a few sexual references in the story. Some are jokes, but I never actually support really putting sexuality in the story for the people who are reading it to get some kind of kick off of it. 
Anyways, as I said, though, not much I can say for uh, lap one, because it's the first chapter. As chapters go, I'll have more to talk about after the summary. For now, then, I'll see you later.